How's it going, Teal Boys? It is conference championship week, and due to a upsettingly uh, disappointing close loss to Arkansas State, we have not won the Sun Belt. Um, we're going to go ahead and take a look at who is winning each conference, or I guess who's going to be playing in each conference. So I guess we'll start scores and schedules. See who's making it to their conference championship games. In the MAC, it's Northern Illinois versus Buffalo. UAB, Florida Atlantic in the CUSA championship. Bama, Florida in the SEC. That's two versus three. Um, what we're going to call it pretty much a de facto playoff game. So while we aren't technically having the college football playoff in our uh, dynasty here, we you know, kind of have one with uh, the SEC championship game. San Jose State and New Mexico are playing in the Mountain West Conference Championship game. Clemson, North Carolina in the ACC. That's one versus number eight. Oregon, USC in the Pac-12, uh, 20 versus 13. Goodness. And Michigan State, Wisconsin in the Big Ten. Michigan State, eight and four, six and three in conference so not uh not the strongest winner of their division but hey they got it done in terms of conferences which we aren't able to have championship games for uh just yet cincinnati sitting at number nine ten and two on the season wins the american oklahoma gets the tiebreaker over a similar record texas that's number four and five in the country but oklahoma will win the big 12 Nothing too impressive for the independents. Notre Dame 8 and 4, just barely in the top 25. And Army and BYU are they're just kind of existing. And in our Sun Belt, Georgia Southern just clips us for that top spot. They deserve it. 10 and 2 on the year, 7 and 2 in conference compared to our four losses, three of them in conference. Um they had a much better defense. If you're looking at their points against, uh, we did manage to beat them, but we couldn't get it done at the end of the season. And so we aren't going to be celebrating the conference championship. Our Heisman watch sees Sam Ellinger jump up to the top spot as Travis Etienne and Najee Harris fall down. Sam Howell and Kellen Mond still sitting in those fourth and fifth spots. Curious to see who comes out on top. We'll take a look to see. What bowl are we projected to play for? We were originally looking RNL Carrier New Orleans Bowl, but Georgia Southern takes that spot against Florida Atlantic. So we're going to be somewhere else scrolling a ways down. You know, we might technically get a New Year's Bowl game. If we get any at all, there's a couple in here. There we go. January 5th against that Northern Illinois team, 6-6, six and 5-4 six, and four in the, their conference. In the Lending Tree Bowl is what we're looking to uh, play here. I'm curious. Let's look at the matchup just in case it does happen. We have the edge on the overall. Uh, statistically, though, they've been doing better. Who have they played and why are they 6-6? Six and six? Uh, Lost to Iowa in a close one. Lost to Colorado State in a close one. Destroyed their FCS team. Uh, barely beat Bowling Green. Lost to a pretty good Kent. Close win against Akron. Close loss against Central Michigan. Destroyed Eastern Michigan. Close loss against Buffalo. Uh, close win against Ball State. Got beat soundly against Toledo. And had a pretty decent win against Western Michigan. They have to replay Buffalo in the conference championship game. So there's a chance that this matchup is changing. Currently, we're looking at a North Carolina-Florida National Championship game. But again... That uh, Florida-Alabama SEC conference championship game has to come first. So I imagine whoever makes it out of that one between the number two and three school will make that national championship. And North Carolina has to beat Clemson to make the natty as well. Since we can't recruit and we don't have a game to play, we'll go ahead and just sim on through into the bowl season and see where we stand. Interesting. Sam Ellinger only comes in third in the Heisman race with Najee Harris winning it, Travis Etienne in second. And the player from Bama looks pretty solid in the season. 1,700 yards, 16 touchdowns, and another touchdown uh, on 276 receiving yards. 
the most first place votes, the most second place votes, and a solid chunk of third place votes. It's an, honestly a pretty close race, 1,506 points to uh, 1,443 to Travis Etienne, but he gets it done and Bama sees another Heisman winner. And how about that? We are playing in the Lending Tree Bowl. Just now, instead of a 6-6, six and six, uh, what was it, Northern Illinois, we are playing against a 6-6 six and six Bowling Green in Mobile, Alabama. This is interesting. I take that to mean that uh, NAU lost ooh, their conference championship game. How about this? Diggs wins the Johnny Rogers Award. They did change uh, some of that stuff. That's pretty cool in the mod. And yeah, now we have this Bowling Green game. But first, we're going to sim through a couple of big bowl games to see, uh, you know, who wins the cool ones? And oh, wow. Okay, well, maybe we should just take a look at the scores that happened in Conference Championship Week. Obviously, some, some things went uh, awry for teams that we were expecting to do well. Uh, Northern Illinois loses the MAC. Florida Atlantic is able to beat UAB in the CUSA Championship game. And how about this? Bama beats Florida 24-21 to win the SEC and make their spot in the Natty. So one of the two teams that were expected to make it didn't. Um, San Jose State's able to win the Mountain West. And Clemson, who was sitting at number eight, takes out previous number one, North Carolina, 42-21. Doubled them up on the score. Uh, they jumped up to third, tried to sneak into that backdoor Natty spot, couldn't make it. Uh, Oregon beats up on USC for the Pac-12. And Michigan State, believe it or not, beats Wisconsin uh, for the Big Ten Championship. So that gives us some crazy, crazy games here in this bowl season. We're going to simulate uh, probably just like the New Year's Six. And uh, we'll see. So I'm just going to scroll on through. We won't look at every bowl game, but we'll see with these big ones what ends up happening. Uh, some of that's very crazy. Peach Bowl, we have Florida, Louisville. I just want to sim this one just to see what happens. Uh, I'm curious. I got to imagine Florida wins it. And yeah, as expected, the Gators get it done. 31-16. In the Rose Bowl, we have Oregon versus Michigan State. And the Ducks are able to take that one with a big victory. 37-14 to in the granddaddy of them all. The Fiesta Bowl. We see a at-large Washington playing Cincinnati. And the Bearcats come up short against the Huskies, 26-20, trying to prove that they belong up there. They do a good job, but just can't quite get the job done. That's a shame because that means Washington has a bowl win. Sugar Bowl sees Oklahoma, North Carolina. And the Sooners win it 31-21. So North Carolina now went undefeated in the regular season and lost back-to-back -back games in their conference championship and their bowl game. Not the way you want to end the year if you are the Tar Heels. In the Cotton Bowl, we've got Wisconsin and Oklahoma State. And the Badgers are able to win that one by 10. The Orange Bowl, we're going to see Clemson in Texas A&M. Three versus six. And following the momentum from their conference championship... Clemson's going to take out the SEC school, 35-31. to 31. And now we come to the big one. Number one, Alabama versus number two, Texas. 12-1 uh, with a 9-1 conference schedule versus 11-1. 8-1 in conference. Uh, Texas, of course, not getting to play in a conference championship game just because we don't have it set up for the Big 12 to be playing uh, a conference championship. So... Let's see who's going to win the national championship on this year. Ooh. Interestingly, it's Texas. The Longhorns win it 31 to 23. Bama's not able to do enough. And yeah, Texas just kind of gets the lead there. And they trade scores for a while. And then they get it done in the fourth quarter. So I guess that in this alternate reality that we're playing out in this dynasty, Texas is back. So congrats to the Longhorns uh, getting lucky maybe through the conference championship week, being able to see the uh, the one and two teams falling and being able to jump up into that second spot and getting a chance to take on Bama. They get it done.
But now it's time for our matchup. In the Lending Tree Bowl, we're taking on Bowling Green. Uh, a C overall team, but they have they look pretty decent statistically. We actually do have a better uh, total defense and rush defense than them. Um, and their pass defense isn't that much better. They do get us in the turnover differential department, and they do get us pretty much on offense. So always going to be a problem for me. And they went 6-6 six and six through the regular season. A win against a bad toll, so they lost to Kent, SMU, NIU, uh, beat Akron, lost to Fresno State. Oh, they got destroyed by Fresno State. Lost to Central Michigan. You know, a lot of these losses to not the best teams. Uh, beat Ball State, beat Miami, lost to Ohio, uh, and then beat Eastern Michigan and Buffalo, believe it or not, to close out the season. That's a Buffalo team that won the conference, so... Kind of impressive that they're able to get that done, and now they've got to, I don't know, take on us, and hopefully we can, you know, do all right in this game. We're going to be doing a bit of a colorway game here, as we're going to go with the black jerseys and the teal pants, and we're going to allow Bowling Green to wear the all oranges. Uh, curious to see how this looks. I think it's kind of an interesting mix-up of colors. 77 overall for us to their 75. We have the one overall edge on offense and two on defense so across the board a better team but you know as we've seen in the past few episodes we haven't been able to get it done so hopefully we can do it here as we load in to our first postseason game they have you know a very mediocre offense running the ball very well um, and just doing a decent job or a mediocre job I guess I should say across the board on defense uh, our offense Obviously, we're moving the ball well, passing, uh, but throwing a lot of picks, doing it. Maybe if we can get the running game going, we'll be fine. Um, meanwhile, on defense, we have the 10th ranked in the country, rushing D versus their 10th ranked rush offense. So that'll be an interesting matchup. And we have just gotten slaughtered through the air. Hopefully, we can hold these guys. Uh, you know, 6-6, six and six, we're, we're technically the better player, and... Uh, as we look at this, these are our top players for next year. Any seniors on the team that show up on these lists disappear, so uh, these aren't accurate. But the Bowling Green's top players for next year looking a lot worse. They have injuries. Running back probable with a right tackle out for the rest of the season. Hopefully he's not a senior and he'll be able to come back for one more year. But as it stands, maybe a, a big benefit to us. Well, I've... Notice maybe an issue, and we'll see. I gotta imagine you can too. We are in the lending tree bowl, as we will uh, elect to kick this one off. But if we look at the center of the field here as Biscardi kicks this one off, the logo still shows that it's the GoDaddy.com bowl. So they got the logos correct on the jerseys, but I guess not on the field and uh, on the sidelines as well. Curious if that's an issue on... Uh, my end or the mods end as oh, before the first play we're gonna get to see Bowling Green backed up with a little false start so now we will go into the zone the, the cover three as we see the Falcons come out for their first play in a first and 15 they are gonna go to the air are we there to stop it well Gunter's there to get the stop after a gain of eight and I'm expecting to see a run. They are going to go towards the edge. Kelly. Oh, I missed with him, but we're there with Gallagher. We do have him in a third and three. And we're going to audible here late to a blitz. We got to him and finally bring down Andrew Clare. It's a one yard carry. And that brings up a fourth and two. Diggs won his returner of the year award. And he's going to see if he can show off here in the bowl game. He fields it cleanly. There's some decent blocking in front. Ah, just the one guy that held the edge doesn't get beat. So only seven yards, and it's time for the offense to get moving. We're going to hand this one off to CJ Marable on first down. He picks up a block, cuts it back inside, stays on his feet, and Marable picked up nine and a half and almost got us a first down just like that. That was a fantastic way to start this game is now... Bring you a read option and let Grayson try to take off. And, ooh, I wanted to slide down there. He's able to pick up four yards in the first down, but I don't like him taking hits. This may be controversial, I know, but we are allowing McCall 
to start and to throw as <laughs> oh my gosh he finds sam denmark who drops it on the slant absolutely disappointing as uh i guess second and ten from almost midfield we're gonna hand this one off and see what marable could do he finds a decent gap picks up five and gives us a third down that i think we should be able to get we'll go to the air on this third down unfortunately i kind of want to throw it to sam denmark and oh wow we're getting hit right as we decide to throw so fourth and five we're gonna have to make a decision here and the decision is that we're gonna go for it the defense did manage to get a stop the first time out but too many times this season have we regretted not throwing for it we find Latushko and he drops it oh we could have scrambled for it no problem but I saw Latushko come open the ball was thrown behind him and he can't hold on so it's a turnover on downs and you know, punting it doesn't seem so bad now. That is disappointing to say the least as we're going to bring some pressure on this first down. They start their drive with a little counter. Absolutely burned me. We were going to be there on the blitz, but instead it's a 26-yard rush and they are moving quick now. Had that run gone to the left, I think we'd stop it very quickly. Instead, they bounce it back, and they're going to go to the same thing. One tackle broke him. Spillum gets his broken, and Andrew Clare picks up nine more. This has gotten bad quick as they're inside the red zone now. Handing it off again out towards the edge. Jackson's there to stop him and force the third down. We need another one of those. I would be very, very happy if we could hold these guys to a field goal on this drive. I'm expecting them to go to the air. It's a, going to be a screen. I was late to see it. Quarterback scrambling. Maybe it wasn't the slip screen. We get the sack. It's a loss of 11, and now the field goal is kind of questionable. On a fourth and 15 now. This is a almost a 50-yard field goal, and there's no guarantee that they're going to get it. Going to see if we can maybe get digs on a run, and ooh. We kind of came close to blocking it. The kicker does have enough leg. And the Falcons are going to go up 3-0. So after the start of what looked like a, a really good drive, we managed to hold them to three. Kind of getting bailed out there by the defense. And, oh, uh, just ran straight at the defender on our return there. So Tig's not getting much, and the offense gets to come out and try again. Running the ball worked very well on our first drive where passing it was pretty atrocious so we're gonna see what we can do on the ground Maripol breaks a tackle and again picks up nine yards on his first play from scrimmage of the drive just like the last drive we're gonna go read option on the second play here McCall again I'm taking a hit with him for um, you know a trivial amount of extra yardage will make the mistake of deciding to pass on this first down it's a play action they're bringing pressure do we have him over the middle? No. Oh, the linebacker stuck with me. I thought Latushka was going to get around him and... <laughs> Throwing a pick. Oh, I thought for sure that he wasn't going to run with Latushka there. We get burned bad. 0 for 4 through the air for Grayson McCall. Now with an interception. And I got nobody to blame but myself on that throw. They're going to go first and 10 and run up the middle. It's a good run as well. 13 yards. Claire's getting it done so far this game. The thing that hurts about most of these runs that they're picking up is that they're on plays where we're blitzing. Thankfully, their offensive line, not the most disciplined. Their second false start of the game. So that one gives us a first and 15 to contend with. We'll see what we can do. If we get tight end in motion, they're going to go play action. Oh my gosh. They had uh, the tight end out to the other side of the field wide open. Somehow they're picking up eight yards on that, and it's second and seven now. I know that statistically these guys have a very good running game, so that's my main focus on these plays, and that's what I'm expecting to see. As that looks like it could be a touchdown. Mats needs to make the touchdown saving tackle, and he does. But Levi Gazarek, uh, however you say it, now has a first and goal for Bowling Green. He continues to stay in this hurry up. We got to bring the blitz. Expecting a run up the middle on first and goal inside the five they move the tight end in motion calling this one now maybe a run to the right it is handed off he goes up the middle we hit him with gunter but andrew claire falls forward into the end zone and we're down 10 nothing here with a minute to go in the first quarter to start this bowl game well we need something good to happen here uh maybe i just don't throw the ball for the rest of the game digs i'm not even gonna bring this one out let's just take the uh, decent field position and try to get the offense working we have run well. We have not passed well. 
Why should we go away from the one that's working? Three yard run up the middle for Marable. And on second and seven, we're gonna go right back to him. Trying to follow the blockers on the counter. We've got ourselves a third and three. Really hoping I don't make a mistake on this play. We're going with the speed option. McCall, oh my gosh, just got obliterated. Fourth and five. This is disastrous. And before we can get the punt off, it is the end of the first quarter. Down 10-0, giving them the ball. The only uh, good thing about this game is that we get the ball to start the second half, but oh, we got to score points at some point. They won't have great coverage on the kick that we should see. Yes, bounce past the return man inside the 10. And it's going to go down to, what is that, the 6? Maybe the 7-yard line. Fantastic punt. And at least we can, you know, flip the field. A little field position battle there. Maybe now we can actually stop this offense from destroying us. They're going to go to the air on first down. <laughs> it never matters. If we get them backed up towards the end zone, they're getting a big play. Ortega Jones goes 12 yards on that first down. And at this point, I don't know what to think as they hand that one off out towards the edge. And thank goodness he fell down because I, I can't do anything right now. Bring in the massive pressure again. This one's a handoff out towards the edge. Kelly has his tackle, bro, and so does Brewer. And we knock him out of bounds, but he picks up three and it's third and inches. That is so disappointing that we had to stop in the backfield. I'm bringing literally everything on this one and it doesn't work. Thankfully, the safety should be able to get the stop. Uh, I had to try to get the stop on the ground. They're five of five through the air and picking up as many yards as they want on the ground. And we'll see now on second and eight what we can get. They are going to get sacked. Oh, he was about, I think, to have a guy open, but Matt McDonald takes the sack and it's third and long. Only one of three on third downs for this uh, Bowling Green team. They go in the five wide set and over the middle, they have a man, but he only gets to midfield. It's going to be fourth and eight and the defense might have got to stop. Matt McDonald is 6 of 6 through the air, uh, but he doesn't find his man deep enough downfield, so they're going to be forced to punt this one away, and that could have been a bit of a shank. Uh, that, that might be out at the 20. Disappointing punt for the Falcons, for sure. It's even worse. Out at the 25, they would have been better off just giving us the touchback since in this game it, you know, only touches back to the 20-yard line. Marable on first down, picking up a gain of two. And I am going to avoid passing the ball like it's the plague at this point. The misdirection sees a couple of blocks. Marable falling forward. Gets four yards and third and four. I've got a tough decision. I think we might be throwing. On third and four, we go to the air. They rush for it. I'm going to run for this. Uh, again, we haven't really been good through the air. I don't even know if we have a completed pass, but we do have Grayson McCall, who's running very well and gets us across midfield with his legs on that play. He wasn't even close to feeling confident to throw that ball. We bring it likely in motion, and the tight end picks up the block for Marable, who gets hit, but not before he can pick up two yards. Second and eight. We're going to the air. I'm looking for Latushko. Has a step. And he's going to finally pull down a catch. 14 yards for Greg there. And hey, maybe we can throw the ball sparingly. On this first down, we'll give it to Marable again. The blocking has been pretty phenomenal so far in this game as he gets a good quick seven there. Two minutes now in the half. We got to be a little bit wary of the clock. Trying to score quick. We're going to go with the read option. McCall, the spin was unnecessary. But hey, we got free 16 yards first and goal now. Not going to stop running the ball just yet. It looks like they're bringing a lot of pressure. Thankfully, it was to the other side, and uh, Marable is able to pick up three yards now inside the five. We're going to risk it here, giving it to the tight end, likely on the jet sweep. He's able to fall forward, still not down. He got two more yards. Thought maybe he was going to be able to crawl over that pile. Now under a minute to go. We're going to get a little risky here. The halfback dive, third and goal from the two-yard line. Marable gets slaughtered at the line of scrimmage. And we've got a big decision to make here on fourth and goal. And I've made the decision. We're going to kick this field goal. We just got to get points on the board. It's not likely that they're going to score again. 
And if we get the ball to start the next half and score a touchdown, we'll be tied up. Burning all the time off of this clock so that they have as little time to screw us over as possible. And Biscardi easily gets it through the uprights. 11 seconds left in the half. It's now 10-3. It's honestly a little bit disappointing of a drive as we're going to squib this one. And ooh, maybe that was not the play as they're going to get a, a pretty decent little return on that. They're almost at midfield with eight seconds and all the timeouts. Expecting a big play here. They will go to the air. Man, able to hold on to that one. Oh, no. Oh, they come out for the field goal. Three seconds to go. We're going to see. I don't think you can ice a, a kicker before halftime in this game, but we're going to try it anyways. That is so disappointing that we give that up. They're likely going to get the field goal now. Kick is up. And yeah, that is too easily good. Oh, my gosh. How... Oh, so frustrating. How stupid am I? <laughs> End of the half. We finally march down the field. A difficult drive just to end it with a field goal. And we give them great field position on the squib. They throw up one pass play. And they've got the, the points back. So it's still down 10. Our last drive was completely worthless. And we are struggling. This second half has to be almost flawless for us. Because it's just not going to cut it to play the way that we were in the first um, you know, maybe starting it with a little returner of the year action wouldn't be so terrible. Diggs gets us out past the 35. All righty. Let's go back to letting Marable run this ball as much as possible. I need him to be falling forward on plays like that, but hey, we've rushed for over 100 yards as a team now. And we will go to the air on second and seven. Marable wide open. Let the running back pick it up and get the first down. That's Grayson McCall's second completion of the day kind of disappointing but we already knew that the passing hasn't been good this season Marable gets four on that carry and we're gonna give it to him on a counter here on second and six a minute into this quarter Marable makes a man kind of missed took a took a weird angle and he's able to pick up the first down we haven't taken a big shot downfield yet this game and here it comes Marable <laughs> I should never throw those ever again. So, second down after the very questionable play call and throw. Put it back on the ground and let Maribol just do what has been working so well. Running it for seven yards. We are 25% on the day at converting our third downs. They're bringing a lot of pressure here. I'm a little bit worried. We're going to flip this play. I'm going to run to the other side. Uh, I don't want that save to be running right where we're uh, where we're trying to go. So we'll give the ball to Marable, but try to avoid the pressure. Getting out towards the edge, doesn't quite have it. He picked up a yard, it's fourth and two. Well, we can't go for field goals since we can't seem to stop this other team. So we'll put it in the air. I just got to get rid of it. Oh, Cameron Brown held on to it. Oh, he bailed me out. That was such a terrible rollout outside the pocket. We managed to survive, however. And that means that we can just continue to go give the ball to Marable a little bit more. I'm <laughs> curious to see when he gets too tired and uh, Reese White comes in. Maybe we need to change how frequently we sub our running backs in and out. Trying the read option on second and six. Marable will get the handoff. And it looked like he got enough to pick up the first down. We are... <laughs> Back inside the red zone now, where on the day we are, believe it or not, 100%. It's just that that 100% is a field goal. And we struggled to get there. First and goal after the scramble for Grayson McCall. We're going with the draw play now on first down. And Marable gets hit behind the line. There is a flag down. I got to imagine this is a holding, but we'll see. You hate to see it. Bringing us back. First and goal now starting at the 15. The guard, Willie Lampkin, it's called for that one. Pretty devastating. Marable, oh, again, getting hit at the line of scrimmage. Just can't quite find the edge right now. All right, on second down, five wide, going to the air, looking for somebody, trying to be patient. I, I didn't, I don't know what I was doing there. I panicked. I didn't want to take the sack. I didn't want to fumble. Honestly, I tried to throw it there, but we just slid out of bounds and now it's third and goal from the 15 
Got to go to the air, throwing it up for Javon Hiley. We find him in the end zone. Hiley gets it done. <laughs> oh my gosh, I thought that was a pick. But we're going to make this a three-point game. Gosh, we ran a, a massive amount of time off the clock on that drive. But we finally find the end zone in this game. 420 coming off the clock on that uh, first drive of the quarter. This quarterback's scrambling. We haven't seen that yet. And gosh, he's going to pick up a solid... 12 yard chunk there so now we have to worry about the scramble from Matt McDonald which is a bit disappointing since he's been throwing the ball so well and maybe he's just completely changed his attitude about the game because he tries to run again there but we get the sack so second and 13 they're gonna go with the screen we're getting blocked pretty well Gallagher gets there and makes a great tackle we've got him in a third and long Quarterback is still perfect through the air on the day. Expecting this one to go to the air. Running backs open. They're going deep downfield. Bush comes down with the interception. And just like that, we've got the turnover battle evened up in this game. And we've got great field position to start this drive. 40 seconds left in the third quarter. We're still down a little bit. In fact, we're going to uh, make a little motion here with Isaiah Likely. I don't want to run in towards all of that pressure on the right side of the line. We'll go the other direction. The blocking was there. I just couldn't quite hit the hole. So only two yards out of that play. Felt like it could have been a lot more. Second and eight. Looking to pass over the middle. We have Latushko. He holds on to it. And it's a third and one. But that's going to, I believe, end our third quarter. So on to the fourth in the... Uh, lending tree slash go daddy.com bulg uh down three but with the ball i think that we can do this we just need uh, a decent drive to finish this one out and then the defense to get one more stop and we could be good on third and one we're gonna go up the middle to marable the running game is the most uh you know consistent thing that we have on this game and then we get it done first down there and I'm doing what you guys are going to call the stupidest move of all time. It's a four verts. Nobody's open though, except over the middle. We had Maripol. Oh, the ball just not high enough to get to him. So it's just an incompletion. I think that it was worth the look. We got to find these guys at some points on one of those as we'll hand it off in the counter working spectacularly today. Another six yards for Maripol. This does give us a third down to work with. And we're looking at the mid-screen. There's Javon Hiley, who gets the first down and a little bit more. Oh, that was a little very scary play. It was just enough, though. And it allows this drive to continue to stay alive. We haven't been uh, getting these done quick. But it seems like we're starting to get it done. This will be Marable's 24th carry of the game. And it's enough to get him to the 100-yard mark, finally. On third and one, I honestly really want to pass the ball here, but we're going to give it to CJ again. There's no blocking, though. He's able to break a tackle, and then he gets slaughtered back at the line of scrimmage. Fourth and one. We're going to kick this field goal and tie it up. I got to make sure that we score these points. The winds, ooh, the wind actually kept that one from being a miss. We put it in from 45 plus out, and it's 13 all with four minutes to play in this bowl game. All righty, defense. It's time for you guys to really step up. They're running out towards the edge. Kelly with a great tackle. Sure, they picked up three, but that could have been a whole lot more. They're really looking like they want to run again. They do out towards the edge. Kelly is there again. Kind of hit him, but it's Gunter who gets the tackle. It is third down now. And I'm expecting a quick pass on this one. No, they handed off the same play it looked like, but he cuts this one back inside and picks up the first down. No problem. On this first down, they hand it off again. Kelly's there, and Spillum's able to show up and finalize the tackle. Only a gain of two. We'll take that. We're running the same play that we did last time, which was a corner blitz. Uh, man, the run gets there really well. We stop him with a great tackle from Spillum, but third and two now. And I honestly think that they're about to pass one of these, although now maybe we guarantee it. Another false start from this offensive line. Their third of the game. It's going to back him up to a third and seven. So we can expect the pass now. Maybe we see a screen. Uh, it is a screen. And they just missed it. Oh, their screens have not worked well. Fourth and seven. The defense holds. 
And not only that, but it's Diggs back maybe to return. Two and a half minutes left in this game. We do have all of our timeouts. This is a returnable ball as well if we just get the right blocking. And so far, so good. Diggs could get us a lot of field position here. He's still going. Diggs with the kicker to beat. Oh, he gets knocked out of bounds across midfield. So close to taking that one to the house. So we will get uh, two and a half minutes here to run our offense and look for, honestly, a field goal could win this. Although they start strong. A loss of two to Maribol on first down. We need to pick up at least uh, six, seven, eight yards. I don't see anything throwing this one away. There was no way that we were going to make the good throw. So we just had to get rid of it. Third and 12 now. I'm not going to lie. It was very, very tempting for me to pull a AI move and try to run the slip screen. Instead, we'll just go with a normal pass. And over the middle, uh, yeah, I thought maybe I could force that. I felt the pressure coming, made a terrible throw. Fourth and 12, we're going to go for it. Not a good place to punt. We can't kick this field goal. So with a minute and 52 on the clock, we're going to throw it. Highly is open, and he catches it across the 25 and gets out of bounds to stop the clock. Oh, my gosh. We're in field goal range with less than two minutes to play. Oh, man. Almost inside the red zone now. I can feel it. It seems like we have a good chance. If you're Bowling Green, I think you got to be taking timeouts at this point. I am more than happy to let the clock run down in this game. Second and six, easily within field goal range. We'll give this one to Maribel. He's got a lot of space to work with, man. Honestly thought he, that he was going to fumble there. That was a big hit, but picks up five. It's third and one with a minute to play. So we're going to hand this one off and hope for the first down. Um, a field goal is all that we need. Marable has that first down. It's a first and goal, and we're going to go with a hurry up just to make sure that we can take a timeout at one second. So with the clock winding down here, we will take our timeout, and we're going to bring the kicking team out onto the field. We have held Bowling Green scoreless as they're going to ice us here at the end of the game. Now, unless they block this, we've pretty much guaranteed ourselves a tie or a win. The kick is up. Oh, that's easy. Right down the uprights. And to end the season in a game that is way closer than it ever should have been, we win it 16-13 in the lending tree slash godaddy.com bowl. Biscardi with a couple of field goals on the day gets it done for us. Oh, I'm glad to finally win again. I thought we were about to lose three straight. Took a lot of effort, but we get there at the end. And uh, how about this throw? While getting hit, McCall finds Javon Hiley in the end zone for the touchdown. And uh, oh, thank goodness we made that comeback. Great job from the defense in the second half. And the offense, uh, you know, did enough at the end of the day. At the end of it, we way outrushed them. Uh, they outpassed us just by a little bit. We obviously did not do a whole lot of passing, but... We did a lot of good passing when it mattered, especially to Javon Hiley. I don't think he'll show up. I think Marable is our player of the game. No, they say Biscardi. Three of three on his field goals with a long of 49, and he hit the extra point. Yeah, you know what? That's worth it. The highest point score. He scored 10 of our 16 on the day. And Derek Bush, our defensive player of the game with the absolutely crucial interception. Uh, man, I'm impressed with the defense holding them scoreless through the uh the second half so we win the lending tree bowl we uh we get the trophy which you can actually see that trophy is changed that is uh that is a new trophy uh picture or icon in the game so that's pretty cool thanks to the mod and now we can uh advance to the end of the season we're going to save our end of season stuff for next episode however we do set a new school season sack record. Uh, that's CJ Brewer with 13 on the year. And we will end the season after the bowl win 9-4. and four. That's a good first year for this dynasty. Our final coaches poll of the season sees Texas in the top spot, followed by Oklahoma. So the Big 12 awfully strong in this dynasty. 
Uh, Clemson third, Alabama fourth, Washington fifth, boo, Florida sixth, North Carolina seventh, Northwestern eighth, kind of interesting. Uh, number nine is Texas A&M, and Nebraska is number 10. Uh, very, very curious. Georgia Southern, the team who won our conference, finishes the year at 15, so that's very good news. They go 11-2, winning their bowl game. And beyond that, there's nothing too crazy. A lot of teams uh, new to the board, just because, you know, bowl matchups will see a lot of ranked teams losing, uh, including, it looks like, Notre Dame, so... The team from South Bend didn't do so hot in their bowl game, it looks like. And I'm curious to see, uh, you know, maybe where we finish the season ranked. Let's take a look. Uh, obviously, the championship contender will show us our true rank, and we're sitting at 45th. Uh, maybe a little bit further outside that top 25 than I would like. But we're top 50, and we did lose, you know, some bad games to, to not the best teams. Um, six and three in conference, nine and four on this season. Wind is a 77 overall. They aren't projecting us too highly for the next few years, but uh, I think that we're going to outperform their targets. The players of the bowl season are going to be both from Texas, winning that natty against Bama. Uh, you've got Joseph Asai on defense, the right end, three tackles, four assisted tackles, and a forced fumble, and Sam Ellinger on the offensive side, 20 of 31 through the air, 347 yards and three touchdowns, and 11 carries for 25 yards. That's pretty solid in a 31 to 23 win against uh, a very good Alabama team. Uh, if you had a team that we didn't look at the bowl results for, I'm just gonna scroll through them all quick. Uh, hopefully you see your team and hopefully they got a win. Uh, some interesting results just seeing them scrolling through, you know, something like Tennessee beating up on Michigan or just beating Michigan 16-10. That, that Wolverine squad did not have a good season, 7-6. and six. Uh, South Carolina destroying Kansas in the Liberty Bowl. Um, but all in all, a pretty interesting season, a lot of chaos, which I like to see a lot of teams losing unexpectedly or just losing in general. No undefeated teams going into the bowl season, so no undefeated teams at the end of bowl season. Uh, and only one at the end of the regular season is, is always fun. Hopefully that's us in a few years, though. And yeah, Notre Dame did lose to a 7-6 Arkansas. We can take a quick look at our All-Americans and our award winners as well. Um, you know, some stuff not too crazy. Uh, looking at the first team, All-Americans. Um... Yeah, no, nothing absurd so far. Um, I'm assuming that we don't have any first team. Oh, we do. A first team All-American in Aaron Diggs as the returner for the team. And remember, he's a freshman. I expect him to be on that uh, all-freshman team as well. Uh, pretty, pretty impressive. And hey, Teddy Gallagher, second team All-American. So we have a first team and a second team All-American. And I got to imagine uh, a freshman as well. We'll just go down and there it is, Aaron Diggs for that. How about uh, our all Sun Belts? We won't go through all the conference teams, but we will take a look. Uh, surprisingly, okay, all three of the linebackers, safety, kicker, returner, and then uh, a left end as well on the first team. Second team, we see a couple guys, likely Carter, Clark, and uh, Overson. Our punter? Uh, hey, that's going to be a lot of XP for us. How about in the awards? We know that we won the uh, returner of the year. Ellinger wins the Max. Well, Etienne wins the Walter Camp. Gallagher came fifth in the Bednarik. Well, Surratt wins it. Uh, he wins the Nagurski as well. Uh, Ellinger wins the O'Brien. The Walker goes to Etienne. The Blitnikoff goes to Marshall. The Mackey goes to Matthews. The Outland to uh, Creed Humphrey from Oklahoma. The Remington also to Creed Humphrey. LaRon Stokes wins the Lombardi, another Oklahoma player. Uh, best linebacker goes to Chesserat, again out of North Carolina. Gallagher again comes in fifth. The Thorpe goes to Nasir Greer out of Wake Forest. The Groza to Seth Small. The guy to Zach Van Rosenberg and the best returner to Aaron Diggs. Do we get to see Coach of the Year? No. Curious to know who won Coach of the Year. Obviously, it wasn't us. And what a season it was for Diggs on the return game. 
2,129 kick return yards and five kick return touchdowns. 717 punt return yards with four punt return touchdowns. That's absurd. Almost double digits uh, in returning touchdowns and would have had that in the bowl game if he would have made one more guy miss. But just like compared to second place, 200 more punt return yards and over a thousand more kick return yards. That's impressive. That's going to do it though for this episode. So glad that we were able to beat a now 6-7 and seven losing record Bowling Green team. And I'm excited to see what we can do in the recruiting. Also, was pretty happy with the results of uh, the season in general. No team seemed to just be completely unstoppable, which is always fun. But the rest of our offseason stuff is going to have to wait for next episode. We'll go through all of it. Um, up until the first game, I think that we will not play a game in the next episode and just make sure that we get nice and in-depth in our off-season. Probably a little bit shorter of an episode, but we'll go through it all there. If you've made it this far, I want to say thank you so much for uh, watching. I appreciate the support. You guys have been so awesome. Uh, if you enjoyed this one, feel free to like the video. Maybe subscribe if you want to. Be notified when other videos uh, are uploaded. And let me know in the comments a couple things. Who specifically out of the ACC, the SEC, and the Big 12 uh, would you like to see us play out of conference? And then how did you feel about this game? Uh, you know, did you think that we were going to be able to win? Because for a while, I certainly was not feeling very confident in that game. And if you want to see some more content, feel free to head over to Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. Give us a follow there to know when we go live. And feel free to follow me on Twitter and join our community Discord. Both of those links are down below in the description. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. We'll see you later. Adios.